Hello, this is Graham Brown from Up School Book Reviews. And every week I bring you, share with you a new book which I believe will help you become a better entrepreneur. If you like these book reviews, then what I suggest is you go and check out upschoolbookreviews.com and check out the course, which is upschoolbookreviews.com slash course. And then you can get my free five book review course where I pick the top five books for entrepreneurs for 2017 that I think will help you become a better entrepreneur. It's a free course. You can go and check it out. You can complete it in an hour. You can use my book review so you don't have to read those books. And if you had read read those books already, then even better, you can get more out of them. Today, I want to talk about Unshakable by Tony Robbins. It's Tony Robbins' latest book. He hasn't published a lot in recent years. He spent most of his time doing events. So there's a lot of the book dedicated to why he's back and why he's doing this book. And he published a larger book, uh, I think it might be last year or the year before, which was uh, Money Master's Game, which is basically about, you know, the whole game of money. And it's a very thick book. I haven't even started it yet because it's, I don't know, 500, 600 pages. So he then brought out Unshakable, which was really the follow-up to that. The purpose of this was really to be about teaching you how to become financially free. And the money book, which preceded this, was really like the complete handbook. And this is more like the field guide. It's a lot shorter, a lot snappier, uh, a lot easier to read. I'm a big fan of Tony Robbins. I've read a lot of his books. I've been to his events. He's been an influence on my life. And especially when it comes to reading books and consuming the advice of people out there. I mean, Tony Robbins would be the first to say he's a big consumer of books and that's how you get inspired, you get motivation and so on. And that's how we learn. So what is this book about? Well, I'll start at the top. Warren Buffett, the legendary investor, if not the best best investor in the world, maybe up there with Carl Icahn as well, but he's the most well-known He said that if you don't work out how to make money while you sleep, you'll be working until you die. So how do you make money while you sleep? An investment is one of the best ways to make money while you sleep. It's also one of the best ways to lose money. I'll talk about that in a minute. But Tony Robbins uses this chart, which he shows. Imagine you had $2,000 to invest every year and you started investing in 1993 and you invested for 20 years. So every year you're putting 2,000 bucks away into the stock market somehow. Now, there's five scenarios in which you could do this, right? You had $2,000 every year to invest for 20 years. The first one is you invest your, you time your investments perfectly. So when the market drops, you're in, and when the market is at its peak, you're out. So you buy when everybody's selling and you sell when everybody's buying. That's perfect timing. The second scenario is you invest immediately. As soon as you get the money, you stick the money into the market. You buy investments. The third one is what's called dollar cost averaging, where you, you know, you split your two thousand dollars into twelve payments every month, and you invest regardless of what's going on. You have a direct debit straight out of your bank account into an investment. The fourth option is bad timing. It's where you sell when the market is low and buy when it's high. So you panic, you sell out, and you buy when everybody else is overconfident too. And the last option is to stay in cash. So you just take your $2,000 for 20 years and you stick it into cash investments, right? You just hold that money in a bank account or whatever. Now, and you compare those returns over 20 years. What's interesting is is obviously the best return is to have perfect timings, to know the market, you know, have confidence when the market drops to go in and you know, be fearful when everybody's greedy in the market and get out. That's perfect time. And that'll give you the best return. $2,000 will become $87,000. $2,000 invested over 20 years, that is, right? Now, the worst investment, quote unquote, is to stay in cash. So if you stayed in cash, you would get the worst return out of all of those options, which is interesting. We know perfect timing is the best, but here's what's really interesting about that scenario is that it's better to invest and have bad timing, i.e. make mistakes with your investments, than it is to do nothing. And the comparison here is bad timing is $72,000 and staying in cash is $51,000. So even if you invested and made the wrong decisions, you'd be 20,000 better off than staying in cash. So that's the first conclusion from Unshakable. It's better to invest than not to invest. But the key is here is how to avoid losing your money. 
So know these five points. And this is how people, amateur investors, lose their money. One, the system is rigged. No matter what you say, the whole financial system is rigged against you. If you think they're going to look after your money, you're going to lose. You just have to look at the fees that they charge. You know, their loyalty is not to the customers. Their loyalty is to the shareholders. And Unshakable goes into a lot of depth about how the system is rigged, how you are worse off being uneducated and simply trusting advisors or mutual fund managers to look after your money. And a good example is if you were to invest 5% of a $90,000 a year income of your lifetime of earnings into a retirement fund or a 401k as it's called in America, you would pay at the end by retirement, you would have paid $277,000 in fees. And most people, 71, 72%, I can't remember the exact data, 72% of people surveyed thought there were no fees in a 401k. And 92% admitted they didn't understand the fee structure of their 401k. So they're paying $300,000 of their money to a fund manager. And they don't even, most people don't even know they're doing that. And this is about education. So the second point avoiding losing money is to be an educated investor. And you that basically means that you, you understand there's only money to be made where there are losses. And there's two sides to that. Let me, let me explain. The first one is you pay a very high price for certainty. So if you keep your money in cash, you pay a lot of money for that, you lose money. So it's always better to invest. So the point is what to invest in. And whilst there are good investments and bad investments, the key is timing, right? Which brings me to the third point, how to avoid losing money. The best, bu- the best time to buy is when others are selling. The best time to sell is when others are buying. So think about a market. You know, there are always bear markets, a bear market being a market that drops. So 1980. Uh, 9, 1998, sorry, 2008, the most recently, we saw 777 points in one day drop off the Dow Jones Industrial Average. And people are talking about $1 trillion being wiped off the value. The important thing is to understand that that money simply doesn't disappear into thin air. What's happening is, is it's trading hands. So for every guy that panics and sells their shares during a crash, there has to be a buyer. So who are these buyers? Who are the people that are buying shares at cut prices during these times? Well, this is going back to another Warren Buffett adage. And he says that, you know, be fearful when people are greedy and be greedy when people are fearful. So when markets crash, people are fearful. You know, people oversell. The headlines talk about imminent doom meltdowns, loss of savings, loss of lifetime earnings, all these kind of things. And these are the best times to buy because people just want to get out and they will sell at any price to get cash. And that's when you can go in. That's where you can go and buy a Ford or a Citigroup for one-tenth of the price it is today. And here's the thing about bear markets. They happen regularly. And even... The 2008 crash, which happened in September 2008, by March 2009, the market started growing again. So that's within six months, the market started growing again. And over 12 months that followed March 20, 2009, it grew 69%. And over the following five years, it grew 178%. So the point is that those guys that were buying when people were selling made a lot of money because they held firm and they didn't panic. So market crashes, this is point four, market crashes are a good thing if you remain liquid enough to enjoy the sales. What do I mean by that? So if you overcommit and put all your money into stock, when that stock crashes, and it will crash at some point, people panic, they want to get cash out, so they sell their stocks at a, a, a market price, well, well below the market price, or well below what it's worth. However, let's say you've got a portfolio, and in that portfolio, you you 
maintain a sizable sum of cash when the market crashes that may wipe out 20 percent of your value but you then have the cash to go in and buy cheap stocks cheap assets when others are selling and then you know when that goes back up what happens is the market floats again as it does with the data that i've just told you within six months or within five years you then sell off your assets again and then you turn that into cash all right, so when the market hits the top, as it's peaking, you're selling off. As it's bottoming out, you're buying in. So the last point here is that the key characteristics of a losing investor is greed and overconfidence. Greed being, you know, thinking that by buying this stock, whatever stock it is, you know, this is your ticket to early retirement. This is never gonna happen. The real returns are made long term. As I talked about going back to that data from 1993, if you invested $2,000 a, a year, within 20 years, you would have $87,000, which is what, three times your money, which is long term investment. You're investing over 20 years rather than one year, two years, which is the greed and overconfidence being the second aspect of a losing investor where you think you're gonna get a home run hit. Yes, one in a hundred maybe are a home run. It's that one stock that gets bought by Google or that one stock which discovers oil in this oil field and has been prospecting for five years at a loss. Those kind of things do happen, but these are the exception rather than the rule. You can't play by the exception unless you really, really know what you're doing or you're trading off inside information, which is often illegal. Overconfidence is a surefire characteristic to kill off investors. They overcommit, put too much money in a stock thinking it's going to come home and the market turns against them almost in all cases. So with those five uh, principles in mind, let's just quick review of those. The system is rigged, so don't trust it. The best thing to be is an educated investor rather than put your money into a mutual fund. And here's the thing that Tony Robbins shows that, you know, these funds that promise you you can invest in the Far East or invest in the high-tech stocks or you can invest in a group of high-yield stocks, whatever it might be, in almost all cases, with the charges included, they underperform simply putting your money into the market. So an educated investor knows this, and it's better to put it into what's called an index fund, which simply tracks the market, all your stocks, you make more returns than trying to outplay the market. So an educated investor knows this, that you can't outperform the market. You can't beat it. You're playing against teams, and these teams have access to trading vehicles which can trade in nanoseconds, where you're trading in hours and days. So they're always going to outbid, outperform you. So to be an educated investor is the best situation, not to trust uh, the funds not to trust the money managers and the third part is to time it to not be emotional about your investment wait till there are sales market crashes you want a market crash because that will clear out the market and a lot of amateur investors will unfortunately lose because of the nature of the system but that's where you can win and the key to enjoying a market crash is to stay liquid enough to have enough money to go in and enjoy it and not to overcommit. And the last part is being about greedy and overconfident because that kills almost every investor at some point in their portfolio lifetime. So those are just five points from the book Unshakable by Tony Robbins. I've done a more extensive review of this, including the key principles he talks about. If you go and check out upschoolbookreviews.com, it's there. And also go and check out my free course as well, where you can get access to five book reviews. The top five books I believe will help you become a better entrepreneur in this year and beyond. This is an investment. The biggest investment you can make is in yourself, obviously, before you start investing in stocks and shares. So my name is Graham Brown. I've been reviewing Unshakable by Tony Robbins. This is upschoolbookreviews.com.